it is my pleasure to introduce Christian Lopez with Time's Direction, Why Time Reversal Doesn't Matter That Much. That much, yeah. <laughs> okay, many thanks, Paula. I, first of all, many thanks for you for, for coming. I mean, for me, this is especially, this is something very special, this is that I put it, of course, Olympia aside, which is a different thing. I have learned philosophy of physics from most of you, so this is super great to, to discuss the thing. But also, many of the things that I wanted to discuss is, it, it was uh, many years of discussing with you just sitting in my chair, right, and reading the papers, but now it's just great to have the, the opportunity to have a more lively discussion. So, this is going to be more or less a bunch of different ideas that I was working on in the, la in, in the, in the last years. But more or less goes, goes in the direction that are already uh, Valia and Brian has presented, so it's, not, it's, it's going to be on, 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 the, on the same line. But what is the, the, the target of the talk? The target of the talk is something like the, follow, the following inference. I mean, how we can go from something like symmetries in green to reality in blue. I mean, there are some, uh, a lot of inferences or arguments that intend to read off what is here from what is, what is there. And I think that the, the, the time reversal symmetry is just one instance of this very general argument that is very popular in philosophy of science, and the metaphysics of science, and philosophy of physics, but concerns in particular the direction of time. Basically, the, the, the idea, as, as I read, the issue is something like, okay, we, we, we can take something like uh, the symmetry, so our theory, in particular time reversal symmetry, and then we can learn something about reality, in this particular case, about the direction of time. My naive question is, because I'm sometimes slow in learning, but it's something like the following, is why does this inference justify? Right, I mean, uh, we, 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 there is a sense in which we can start off from something like uh, a piece of mathematics in which we, we show that some structure is conserved under some alterations or some transformation, and then we learn something about uh, reality, about what the world is like. So this is a bit passing to me, so I, I spent some time trying to justify this inference and see whether it can be justified or not. So what is the, the, the aims of the talk? Just to, to, to give a brief presentation. It's okay to argue that the inference can only be justified under some assumptions. It's not obvious. It's not obvious that we can start off from some symmetries in the theory and then we can go to the reality. It's not obvious to me. You need something else. You need to put something else in the argument. And the idea is to show that what you have to add is could be challenge, right? I mean, you have many other assumptions to make the argument work. And uh, this assumption can be challenged because it, in general, uh, has to do with our uh, idea of what symmetries are, with role they play in symmetries, uh, also some assumption about the space and time, about, about, about uh, loss of nature, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is not controversial. This is, could be a little bit more controversial, I think. But this is probably, I mean, I'm not going to talk about this in particular right now. I'm going to focus on these two things. But I think that, well, I mean, if we reject this inference, because, for example, we think that some of these assumptions cannot be very well justified, so we, we reject the, the argument in general, well, I think that people that believe that there's uh, something like a primitive direction of time, okay, probably they have a chance, right? Again, this is nothing of what I'm going to say now is an argument in favor of something like primitivism about the direction of time, but it could be uh, a way in which we can just pave the way for that. But this is going to be more the, 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 the conclusion, but this is the spirit of the, of the, of the presentation, right? So basically, this is the, the outline. So per first, how I read the, 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 the more general problem of the direction of time, then I'm going to present the time reversal inference, and then I'm going to go straight to the assumption and objections. Good. As, as, as I said before, when, when I was, was introducing the, the, the target, as, as, I read, as, I mean, as I read the dialectic in the direction of time debate, it seems to be just an instance of what uh, Shamik Dasgupta has called uh, the symmetry to reality inference. This is a 2015 paper. I, I think that this is a more or less a very nice way to, to put the, the inference as appears in the literature. But the idea is basically something like this. I mean, I'm just uh, almost quoting what Das Gupta already said. It's okay, take the laws of physics, just a set of laws, and there's gonna be a property, let's call it P in the laws, whose value can vary freely while keeping 
the law true. We, we, we can rephrase this last part in different terms, like keeping the structure of the law invariant, blah, blah. Uh, well, okay, then if P2 is true, uh, so P, these properties, we, we can say, okay, it's redundant, superfluous, it's not objective, blah, blah. I mean, this is a different way in which we can interpret what this second premise means. I mean, uh, this is what uh, Dasi Gupta, I think, tried to convince us that, okay, this, is, this, this idea has to do with something like observation, right? It's not observable. But putting that aside, we have, we have then uh, something like an epistemic premise saying that we, can, we, we should go with something like the, the, le, the simplest or the less redundant uh, structure. So we shouldn't accept this property as part of the, of the reality, of our ontology, of our reality. Therefore, P cannot be part of the reality, right? So this is a way in which we, can, we, we just take some symmetries, then we add some, mm -hmm. some, some premises about uh, epistemic values, about uh, what we mean by some property varying freely, and then we can say something about the world. For example, that this property is not part of the reality. I, uh, when, when, when I read for, for the first time this, the Dasigupta's paper, I mean, what, what I, I mean, I, I, I like the way in which he presents all, all this argument, and uh, also, also his ideas about symmetry seems to be very, very, very nice, even I have some disagreement, but in general it's fine, but my, my, my point is that, okay, this symmetry to reality inference seems to be too strong. I mean, reality actually, I mean, probably coming from a more uh, metaphysically oriented uh, way of, of bringing these things, I mean, Okay, in general reality, we, we should distinguish between two different ways in which we can talk about reality. Reality is almost everything. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a very vague name. So the, one of the distinction is between, okay, what is, could be primitive in the, in the reality or in the ontology and what is derivative in ontology. But it's not really about reality. It's about these two different levels, what is primitive and what is derivative. Or if you want, they are not even levels. They are just two different things. But the idea is that we, 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 we could explain something about reality in terms of uh, some primitive that explain what is derivative. And the primitive is just what they are. It's just primitive. And they cannot be reduced to anything else. So when Das Gupta said that this argument, this argument is a good argument to learn about reality, I would say rather that it's a good way, or probably could be a good way to learn about what is primitive. Right? It's not reality what is really at stake. When discussing about the direction of time, I don't really think that people want to say something like the, the error of time doesn't exist. What they want to say is something like the error of time is not primitive. It's not part of the, of the basic stuff that we have in the world. So I'm, I'm going to just rephrase the, 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 the Das Gupta argument in terms of symmetry to primitive inference. The argument is the same. The, the only conclusion is that whatever you have in the, in the laws of physics that can freely vary under some transformations. It's going to be redundant, blah, blah, but it's going to be part of the reality, though it's going to be part of the, we could call the derivative reality. It's, going, it's not going to be a primitive of, of reality, or a primitive of your ontology. This is a very, well, a nitpicking argument, but it, I mean, I want to go to that because the, the I, let, me, let, me, let me just give that. The way in which I, 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 I try to frame in general the discussion about the direction of time is not really about whether entropy increases or whether radiation, comics radiation goes well. I mean, this is a, a, sec a secondary problem. The main problem is whether we should play the direction of time as an aspect of, as, as, as part of the primitive ontology or as a part of the derivative ontology. Okay, if we are in, on this side, the, in the green side, okay, we, 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 we can tell a story about entropy increasing behaviors, or, or sorry, about cos cosmic radiation, and that's perfectly fine. But the decision previously is to do something like the following, is to say, okay, when I'm making out my ontology, I should decide whether this property is going to be primitive or not. And I think that the argument, as I presented previously, is a good argument in general to say why something shouldn't be a primitive in ontology. So this is just a general, a general framework. And okay, and some, some uh, consequences of this is, okay, the problem is not really about whether the direction of time exists. Of course it exists. I mean, exists, but it could be as a derivative level. It could, could be just a, 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 a derivative thing, right? Uh, or an emergent thing, whatever you want to call it. But oh, it exists. The, 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 problem, the real problem is that it's not really primitive. Uh, 
So um, I take the, the usual time reversal inference, as, as I said before, the idea that we can, we can start off from something like time reversal invariant laws and then say something about the direction of time as an instance of this symmetry to primitive inference. So we are saying something like the following. We start with some set of laws that are time reversal invariant, and then we can say something about whether the direction of time is primitive or not. And my question is whether this is a good argument or not, or whether this argument can be justified. And as you already know, for me, it can be only justified under many assumptions. But let me now rephrase a little bit the structure of the inference. It's more or less the same, but <laughs> just put it in a, in a, in a, in a, in a different way to, to see how the logic, I think, that goes. Uh, we start with a, f a kind of conditional, with, which is more or less already in the, in the Dasgupta, Dasgupta's um, argument. This conditional says something like the following. If the dynamical laws are time reversal invariant, then a primitive direction of time is metaphysically unnecessary. Of course, you, you, you then, and this is why this is the, the red star is, okay, you need to say something more about why this is allowed. And the idea is that it has to do with something like uh, surplus structure, uh, redundancy, and so on and so forth. But the, the, the idea is that everything more or less is packed in this first condition. But we, as I say, we have this fir first premise that this is this conditional, and then we have the premise two that this, again, uh, kind of epistemic advice in general that we shouldn't posit unnecessary structures. We can call it parsimony. And then we have a premise three that could be an empirical formal premise. I mean, it's empirical because it depends on having empirically adequate laws, but it's formal in the sense that you, you, you prove that some symmetry is the case formally, right? You transform the, 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 the equation in a particular way. But the, 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 the premise three is something like the following. It happens that most of these dynamical laws are time reversal invariant. Then by both exponents with the other premises, we have something that we shouldn't it a primitive direction of time, right? This is followed from P2 and, pre and P4. But I, I think that more or less something like this is going on in, in, in the discussion, right? We, we accept something like this premise, and then we have some um, epistemic advice about whether we should posit or not uh, unnecessary structure. We have a uh, principle, of, principle of parsimony saying that we shouldn't. And then we have uh, the premise three that is mostly empirical and formal. But something like this is what I'm going to call the, the, the time reversal inference. And you can apply it, for, of course, into many different physical theories, right? I mean, it's just to be quite general. And then you need just to fill in the details. There are different ways, I mean, there are different ways in, in which you can just attack the argument. One of the most common ways to say, OK, no, this premise is, of course, false. I mean, already Brian talked about the uh, uh, CP and CPT violation, uh, CPT, CP and T violation in uh, weak, in weak decays, weak decay interactions, but okay, this could be the right way, but it could be a good way in which you can say, okay, well, this argument, okay, is, is fine in general, but this premise is not, it's not true because we have time reversal, uh, non-time reversal invariant law, so it doesn't follow that we should, we should impose it a primitive direction of time. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go that way, right? I mean, I, I think, there are some debate around this. There's people that think that is enough, some other people that think that it's not enough. I'm not going that way. But this is just a way to go. Another way to go is to object the, the inference, this inference in per se. Um, but I'm, I mean, this is uh, some other people do that, something that, okay, why we should just uh, talk about something like metaphysical, something about necess necess ne something like uh, Necessity or un something unnecessary in the in the in the in the theory, starting from symmetries. They try to decouple these two things and say that the inference is, is not right. I mean, I, I I'm not going to discuss this either. What I'm going to discuss is just this specific word, metaphysically. So the first thing, I mean, I I think that the, the inference, I mean, the, the 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 conditional is overall fine, but my my worry is with the word meta, with the word metaphysically, metaphysically necessary. So one of the first things I want to do is argue against a metaphysical reading of the assumption. Right? So, okay, this, this conditional could be, could be true, could be a very good um, conditional for, for doing many different things, but not for doing metaphysics. And I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to say why. But the, the, the second thing I, I, I want to say is that I, I, I already 
va uh, value arrays or something in, 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 in these lines that, well, when, when, when we, we have to assess this third premise, uh, it happens that most dynamical law are transversal invariant, well, I mean, I would say, well, it depends on what you mean by non-reversal, right? I mean, there's, as you, as you already know, um, discussion about whether we should call this particular piece of mathematics time reversal or motion reversal and why they are going to send the same or not. Well, the idea is that this premise could be under determined under some assumption. Or differently, to get this premise true, you need to add something to this premise to, uh, to, to make the argument to go through. Um, but without this assumption, so the, 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 the premise is going to be under, under determined. Or I want to argue in that, in that way. So, assumptions and objections. So remember that the, the first thing is about this, right? about the, the word metaphysically unnecessary. The first, so the, 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 the thesis that I, I, I want to hold is to make the distinction between two different approaches to symmetries in general, but then we, I think that we can fairly apply it to uh, the case of time reversal invariance. And the thesis is something like the following. I can, I, I, I can buy this argument. I, I, I can say something like, well, if the laws of physics are time reversal invariant, then uh, it's metaphysically necessary to, uh, to posit that direction of time. But I can only buy this if you start with something like uh, metaphysical premises. And some people believe, I mean, that we already have this metaphysical premise because symmetries are somehow uh, already part of the ontology. And this is the line in which Baker and Stephen French and David Fern are going. In, in particular, when I, I, I gave this talk, with, uh, a similar talk before, and also was pointing out that, okay, this inference doesn't work because you are starting from something like mathematics and then saying something about the world, seems to be something missing. And Stephen French was, no, it's not mathematics. Symmetries are already part of the ontology. So you are starting from ontology and going to the ontology, so everything is fine. Okay, that, that's a fair point, but the idea is that you are having a very realistic way of reading about symmetries. And this is, I would say, okay, could be, could be a challenge. So the, the overall idea is to say something like the following. Time reversal symmetry or time reversal invariant has to be somehow placed, located in the ontology so that it can be relevant for the direction of time. And then when we do that, so there is a straightforward way to go from something like time reversal symmetry to, uh, to something like the direction of time. But you need to start with some metaphysical premise. And metaphysical premise is, okay, symmetries are not, are not just something at the level of the theory. It's not just at the level of representation. It's just not an epistemic thing. It's something that is already placed as ontology. Even in, in some cases, it's part of the fundamental ontology. So, more or less, the, the idea is that there is something already, there is some, as, I mean, in, 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 in buying this first conditional, there is something already, uh, there are already some commitment about uh, there's some commitment to a realistic reading of symmetries, but this is not obvious to me. I mean, this is I mean I, I I don't see that we should do that. I mean I I I I I I, I think that Stephen French and uh, David Schroeder make a really good case, but I'm still unconvinced. I think that it depends on other things, as I'm going to argue in, in shortly. But it's not obvious to me that we should do that. And I'm going to show some, some counterexample or some, or what I believe that some people could complain about, about this, this way of, of, of reading about symmetries. So in, in, in this paper uh, that I, I wrote some, some months ago, it's still under review. Uh, well, what, what I, 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 I say, or I try to say something like the following is this type of inference, like the idea that we can start from some symmetries and then go, and then we can go with to something like reality or, or, or to learn something about what the world is like, imply to take uh, symmetries metaphysically seriously. And this is what I call symmetry realism and symmetry fundamentalism. They are not the same, but now I'm, I'm just, just keeping things short. Uh, but of course, you need some additional assumptions to, to, to make a case in favor of this. I mean, if you do something like this, then you can justify this conditional, but to do this, you need other assumptions about, for example, whether you are gonna take idealization seriously, if you're going to take uh, this uh, on local level or a global level, if you think that the theory is about the space time as a whole or not, blah, blah, blah. But I, I think that all this dialectic, all these things could be in conflict with some metaphysical backgrounds. I mean, I think that 
You can make a case in favor of this and therefore making a case in favor of the inference in general, but only within some metaphysical background. And, and it's true that in the case of Stephen French and David Strain, they have this metaphysical background. In the case of uh, Stephen French, you know, the whole ontic structural realism. In the case of David Schroeder, something like this uh, phase space realism. But you need more structure to make a case in favor of this. But I, I can imagine cases in which you are not happy with doing anything li li like this. You are not happy with placing symmetries at the level of the ontology. Uh, and what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say, I'm trying to, if we can give an approach to symmetries in general, but also to time reversal symmetry in particular, just an epistemic virtue. And by this, I just mean, I am being very vague, but it's the purpose of just simplicity. But if you, if, if, you, if you can make a case in favor of saying something like time reversal invariant is just an epistemic virtue, then you are not taking metaphysically seriously. And then, for me at least, the inference, the, the time reversal inference is now much weaker in the sense that, okay, it doesn't have this, this persuasive force that has before. Because again, I mean, what you are discovering at the level of the theory is an epistemic virtue, and then you are saying something about the world. And for me, this is strange. I mean, why, why, why should I read something? Should, should I read off something about the ontology from an, an epistemic virtue? But I, I mean, I, I and now this is something that Barry probably can say better. But I imagine that humans could make a case in, in this direction. So this is what I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of. Suppose that we are all humans, and suppose that I am, everyone is the human that I'm thinking of. I mean, this is this particular human in which we have the ontology, which is this human mosaic in which you put whatever you want. I mean, you can put natural kinds instantiated at a space time point, or you can point, or you can put just point particles, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just the, the thing is that this is going to be the human mosaic, and you are going to have these contingent regularities. And of course, we are gonna we are gonna make some generalizations about this, and there are gonna be many, 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 many of them generalizations about these these regularities. But at some point, we 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 strive for simplicity and informative and informativeness. So we are gonna discover that some generalizations perform better in this aspect. So they are gonna be they are gonna be theories in the what sometimes is called the best system, right? So these these are a particular subset of generalization that are grounded in the human mosaic that can systematize their, their regularities in such a way that perform very well in informativeness and simplicity. So far, so good. But the idea is, OK, when, when we are doing that, it's true that we have this twofold um, aspect, right? These this, this theorems in the best system that we can call it, uh, we can call them laws, they are somehow grounded in the regularities, but they are also have some epistemic virtues, right? They have some epistemic virtues about in which, in which language this, this should be written, uh, whether they are going to be deterministic or not, and so on and so forth. But the idea is that also I think that many physical symmetries, as we say, and this is space time symmetries, are part of these epistemic virtues in, in, the, in the sense that they are second order generalizations of first order generalization. These first order generalizations are the theorems in the best system that supervene on first order facts. But it seems that, seem, again, this is more or less the, la, the Mark Lang, Lange dialectic without the realistic part, but this idea that we are going to shape the laws in such a way that we want them to be very informative and very simple. And to do that, we need something like impose some symmetry principle. But this symmetry principle seems to be serving the idea of having these laws in this particular way. So I, I, again, I'm not saying that all humans should say something like the following, but I think that they provide the metaphysical framework to say something that is coherent with this. I think that they could say something like, OK, no, look, we, I, I don't need to place the, I, I, I don't need to, to buy the idea of having a modal structure in the world. I don't buy the idea of having a, a, a substantival uh, state space. I have this human mosaic, but it's clear to me that the physical symmetries are playing a role not in the human mosaic, they are not here, but are somehow there and just playing this role in systematizing the generalization, serving to the purpose of giving us more inf informative and, and simpler generalizations. But what, what the, I mean, what I think that 
at least with the, with the humans <coughs> I, 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 have, I have talked before, is the distinction is clear. What is green is the ontology, and then you have the ontological discussion about what is going to be within the human mosaic, natural, na natural uh, kind properties or uh, structures, whatever. But it's true that you also have in blue something like uh, what is the theory, what is the representation of this thing, and there are going to there are going to be things here that not necessarily match things there. And again, I, I, I could say that physical symmetry could be one of these things that is playing an epistemic role here, but not necessarily are somehow here. Now, if we buy something like like, like this. I think that we should make this distinction, right? We have some issues of ontology, whether the human mosaic has a duration of time, for example. This could be an, ontolo an ontological issue. But it should be conflated with issues of the representation. I mean, how we are going to formulate better physical theories. They are two separate things. Uh, again, the whether the duration of time is primitive or not is an ontological issue, right? It's something that we should figure out uh, I, I, I'm not going to say independently from the issues, issues of representation, but we need a strong uh, metaphysical and ontological argument to make a case in favor or against primitivism and the, in about the duration of time. But I think this is going to be stronger. Whether a physical theory is time reversal invariant or not is not an ontological issue. It's a representational issue. Right? It's whether we can formulate laws in such a way to achieve certain degrees of simplicity and informativeness. But again, this is about theory construction. It's not about what the world is like. The world could be different ways, but we can just achieve here some, some degree of simplicity and informativeness that is given by formulating, for, for, formulating uh, physical laws in a time reversal invariant way. And I, again, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that every human should say something like, like that, but they're saying that they provide a framework in which this is coherent. But if this is coherent, then I think that the time reversal inference is in trouble because there are many assumptions about the, the place that symmetries ha have in the ontology that cannot be made. Cannot be made because they are going to be just representational issues, no issues about the ontology. So just to wrap up this part, this is how I, 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 I read the, the, my argument, if you want. The time reversal inference entails taking uh, time reversal invariance metaphysically seriously, right? I think that it entails some form of, of symmetry of realism because otherwise I cannot get how you can go from piece of mathematics to something about what the world is like. You need to add something in the middle. And you can very, very fairly add something like symmetry of realism or having a realist commitment to symmetry. But this is something that you have to add. But of course, this is something that I can, I can argue against. And I can, I can tell all these uh, human-like story and say, no, okay, look, why should I do that? And for me, the symmetries are not part of the ontology, are part of the representation of the ontology. In this way, I am deflating the meaning of time reversal invariance. And by, mean I, by, by that, I mean something like, I'm not taking time reversal invariant metaphysically seriously. <laughs> then I am rejecting something like symmetric realism. And, 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 and I think that one of the milder, yeah, one of the mildest way to put it is to say something, well, okay, the conclusion is something like the following. The deflation of time reversal invariance, telling all these stories, seems to require a qualification of time reversal invariance, or just a rejection. Well, but the, uh, uh, the, sorry, the, the time reversal invariance um, argument. At least I need to qualify, uh, qualify the argument. By qualify the argument, I'm saying something like, I need to add this as a premise in the argument. I say, okay, I'm taking time reversal invariant metaphysically seriously, so I'm committed with something like the following. Otherwise, I think that the argument doesn't go through. So, yeah, this is the one. If, 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 if we want to accept this condition in this particular way, saying about that we can start off from something like uh, symmetries, a piece of mathematics in the, in the representation, and then say something about uh, what the world is like, well, we need to add something, and what you need to add is something like symmetry realism, and that could be challenged. This is one, one of the points. I mean, I'm, I'm, not saying that, I'm not saying that this is the only way in, we, in, in which you can reject the argument, and probably there could be other ways that are not humans. I'm not saying that this is also a knockdown argument. Probably you have very good reason to not be a human, 
that, 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 that's completely fair. But the, my, my point is that you need qualification. You need to add the premises somewhere. You need to put your cards on, 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 on the table, right? I mean, you have to see, OK, I believe in something like, like, like this. And then we can discuss about the premise, but this is a different point. So this is the, 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 the first point I wanted to make. The second point is just more related to uh, Valia, uh, Valia's and Brian's talk. is the problem of what we mean by reverse time and the problem that could be a, a case of underdetermination. So we have it in the, in the argument, in the time reversal inference, uh, I put this, this premise. And I say, OK, that, 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 that could be very well true, but w that could be very well true, but of only if we agree on what we mean by time reversal. And it seems that we have very good reasons to disagree about what we mean by time reversal. Uh, but if this is so, if there is something like a case of underdetermination in the way in which we understand time reversal invariance, sorry, in the way in which we understand time reversal and then we represent it formally, then we, we, can, we, can, we can have a, a we, we need some qualification again. We need to say, okay, by time reversal here, I mean something very specific. I mean <coughs> motion reversal plus some parametri parametrization of time, or I, I, I mean something like a reflection of, of, of time in the, in the t-axis, or something like that. I need to, to say something more. It's just this, this, this claim alone it could be, again, under the determined. So everything started with, I mean, everything for me in my life, I started with this, with this book by David Holler, and then by this paper by Craig. I mean, I, I was very, very, very convinced about, <laughs> about, about these, these things, and uh, um, Brian was, 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 was right in place me in the, on this side, right? On the side of the people that believe that, well, probably it's not the standard way to go, it's not the best way to go. Um, we, we, we can just represent time reversal differently. But then I read other papers. I mean, this is the, the, the paper, but, I mean, all, many other papers, but this is the, the one I remember right now. It's when it's John Ehrman paper against David's book. And this is the Malament paper about, uh, again, <laughs> against David Albert's book again, but it's about electromagnetism. Uh, there also this paper about uh, Jill North, right, to put out two different views on type reversal that for me also was very, very, very useful to think about this issue. And this is, the, of course, the Brian Roberts paper, which for me was very complicated because it was, okay, probably he's right and I am completely wrong. And I had to think these things through. And also this paper by Valia, which also uh, just, I don't know, showed me that, okay, this is very complicated and we should do something different. And, and <laughs> And, and now, I would say that after, 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 after reading this, okay, I, 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 I need to say something. I mean, I, at some point, I believe that Craig and David is, are right, but also a bit Brian and Valia and other people have very good arguments. And well, so I, I, I wrote a couple of papers about this. I mean, you don't need to see. I mean, this is the paper went, but they, 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 I mean, it's gonna be very, I mean, the conclusion is very boring because I mean, after all, after all this, these papers of, the, of, of this idea of this discussion, I think about when I, when I face this, 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 this premise, I, I believe, well, it depends. This is the, the conclusion of the for <laughs> Well, it depends on what you mean by time reversal invariant. What do you mean by time reversal? There are many different dimensions or the many different facets in which you can um, uh, expand the notion of time reversal that is going to be complicated. And I, I think that the, the, the David's argument and Craig's arguments are just taking some assumptions that are different from what Brian or other people are doing. In, in particular, they are, for example, thinking about time differently. They are thinking about what the role of symmetry should be differently. And this is going to shape the way in which they disagree about the representation of time reversal. But they really mean different things. They, they even metaphysically mean, mean different things, or they could mean different things. So, <clears throat> so this is what. Uh, more or less what I want to argue now is if this premise is true or is relevant for the discussion about the direction of time will depend on two things or at least two things. How we formally implement the idea of reversing time. I mean, and I, I, I can make a case that, well, the, the difference in the way in which we formally implement time reversal could be different because we are conceptually meaning something different about time. 
an about time reversal and then of course we are going to have a different representation but of course the discussion now is whether who is right about time and about time reversal, right? I mean, in the, in the conceptual level. But it's a different discussion. The disagreement, I think, that is, 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 is there is in the, at, at the level of the concepts, not at the level of the formal representation. Uh, and or to put it differently, I mean, as, 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 I, as I understood this, is, okay, you are following different intuitions about what is time, if time reversal. And then, of course, you are going to, you are going to reach different representation because the, 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 the concept you started with was different. But this is one, one thing. The other thing is that there are some assumptions about laws, models, symmetries that are also playing a role in, in the way in which we evaluate this premise. Uh, I mean, this is, this is I mean, I, again, to put it in a different way, I, I could accept these premises as it is, but I would need to add something else. I would need to add something about be clear about the metaphysics of time, and therefore be clear ab about your, your meaning of time reversal, but also be clear about what you mean by dynamical laws. I mean, could be fundamental laws, phenomenological, law, um, phenomenological laws, etc. What do you mean by symmetries? I mean, you are, you are thinking of symmetries in which way? You are thinking of symmetries as something that we impose of, on, upon theories or with something that we discover through theories. Well, all these things I think, I think should be should be there, should be the, should be, there should be in the argument somehow in order to, the argument to go through. Mm. But again, we can, again, the, the, the thing is that when you are adding premises, you are adding reason to disagree with the premises and then you are just messing everything up. So the first point is, okay, we have time reversal, invariance, but this is something about time reversal, but what do you mean by time? So give me a metaphysic of time. I mean, what do you mean by reversing time? And for me, it was um, not obvious, but I mean, it's, it's, it's clear that your metaphysic of time could just take you in different directions about what you're going to think about time reversal. So uh, the point that I tried to make in one of the papers is, I mean, at, at, uh, at some point, I believe that the a standard approach of, or as I call it, the orthodox approach, approach was wrong. It was just unjustified. There were many assumptions that are not justified. It, it would be question begging, whatever. I mean, question begging, whatever. Um, I, 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 I thought about. I mean, and this is what I, I thought. But then I realized that no, they are, they are not doing exactly this. They are, they are, they are doing something different. They are trying to model time in a particular way that is, I think, very close to the way in which relationalists about time think about time. Right? They have. When, 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 when Brian this morning put this, 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 this quote by Bigner saying, well, probably we should call it motion reversal, not time reversal. I think, I, also I, I found the quote in other places, right? It's in Valentine's book, it's in Schenker books. I mean, it's more or less the same story again. They are thinking of time, not as Newtonian time, not as a substantial time that you have to turn around. They are thinking just about moving things in one direction and then moving, moving them backward. This idea of having an involution. But the idea that you, if, you, if you mean by time reversal something like an involution and you think that you are fairly call it time reversal because you have some relationalist or some relationalist like idea about why time is. And if, 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 I have, if I add this idea that if I have a relational metaphysics of time in which the idea of time reversal somehow collapses with the idea of motion reversal of that motion reversal realize, realizes the idea of time reversal, then the orthos approach, at least for me, makes sense. It makes sense in the, in the, in the plain sense that, well, we, they are trying to just represent an involution. And in order to represent an involution, you need to add something. You need to add some constraint in order to the, the inversion should be uh, possible of representation. But it, this, is, this is unfair, but again, it depends on the metaphysics of time. It depends of whether you are buying or not something like relationalism. Again, I, I'm talking about relationalism because you are thinking of time reversal. I mean, the orthodox view is thinking of time reversal as something like an involution. If you're, th if you're talking about an involution, I would say that relationalists would think about time reversal more or less in the same way, like m making things going backward because there's only things plus uh, temporal relations. So this is the, the way in which I, I found to make sense of the, of, of the orthodoxy, right? 
they are really fine, but they have an underlying uh, relational metaphysic of time. But, uh, okay, relationalism somehow could imply this way of representing time reversal. But I, I don't see that. Now, I mean, if, if I change the metaphysical background, I say, okay, I don't really buy the relational story. I, I, really, I am really a substantivalist supporter. I, I like substantivalism. Well, I, I think that this could be a case in which you can disagree with the orthodoxy. We, we, we can just make a case, okay, no, by time I mean time, substantival time, not just matter plus, tem plus temporal relations. I mean something that is independent from matter and temporal relations. And this is what I want to turn around. Probably this idea, could, someone could, could, could say, or someone have told me, okay, this, this idea is not very useful in physics because we cannot do this. So we only do this, so this is the rational way to go. But again, it, it's not my point. The point is that if you are here, I think that you, ha you, you could make a case against the orthodoxy. Just because you are, you are now having a different idea of what is time, therefore you're having a different idea of what it means to reverse time, and therefore, of course, you can, make, you can just come up with a different representation of what is really implementing your idea of time reversal. But again, you have a substan substantial <laughs> metaphysical di di uh, distinction between these two views. So, for example, if, if you think something like uh, time reversal as a reflection, for example, well, I think that you are more in, I mean, I'm not saying that you are a substantivalist about time, but you are more here than here, right? You are more, you are closer to some substantivalism than relationalism. To begin, you are just decoupling motion reversal from time reversal. And you are saying that they are independent. And I'm not sure if a relationalist could say something like, like that, at least not in this, in this simple way. But just to wrap it up, it's more or less this idea. Okay, I, I, can, buy the, the, I, I can buy the idea of my, uh, my loss of physics are time reversal invariant, but I, I, would, I, would, I would kindly ask something like this, this idea. Okay, but you mean by time reversal something like, what, li like motion reversal, right? You mean something like uh, what Wigner said about time reversal. So you are in this, in this green side, right? And if you are that, I, 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 I can buy the argument. But if you are in this part, I could say, okay, yeah, if you, have, if you are here, I, 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 can, I can accept that you have a disagreement with that. So this is fine, but please give me something like the following. You are meaning by time reversal something like motion change reversal, right? You are, you are saying something like following, and you want to represent this, and you are not thinking about turning time around, right? You are not taking us a substance like time and turning around. You are thinking about moving things from one place to another just in the opposite direction of time. Uh, so this is the one of the first, what I say, one of the first qualification, given the physics of time, and then um, I, can, I can make sense of this, of this premise three. This, the second point, it's gonna be three points, the second point is some assumptions about fundamentality, and uh, what I mean is something like the following. Uh, this is something that came up many times when I, I give this talk, is that, well, when, when you talk about time reversal invariant, of course this is not true because there are lots of particular laws or models that are not time reversal invariant. So why you are saying that most physical laws are time reversal invariant, which is quite the opposite. Most physical laws are not time reversal invariant. As soon as you have something like non-conservative forces, you have friction, blah, you don't have time reversal invariant, so why you are saying that? Well, yeah, I mean, this is, the, this is uh, uh, I think, a, a, a good point. And, but I, I think that there is, again, some hidden assumption here. One of the assumptions is that there seems to be a distinction between something that we can call fundamental laws or covering laws, to use a Nazi current language, and phenomenological laws or particular laws. And I think that when, when people usually bring up this argument and bring up the idea of, all, phys all physical laws are time reversal invariant. They are meaning all fundamental laws or all covering laws are time reversal invariant, or most of them are time reversal invariant. They are not meaning phenomenological laws because they are they are making a, not only a conceptual distinction between these two things, but also a more ontological distinction. They are saying that these laws are ontologically privileged, right? And they somehow latch onto reality at the fundamental level while particular, particular and phenomenological laws 
are not, they are derivative. So when we want to, re when we want to learn something about uh, what the reality is like using this argument, the symmetry argument, we, we, we need to focus on these laws, on the fundamental laws, on the covering laws, whatever you want to call it. But it's the idea that the simplest expression of the law without any interaction, just a simplest model, and this is going to tell you something about what is ontologically fundamental. And we want to learn something about this. And I mean, I, I'm more or less drawing this. OK, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm just drawing this by a discussion that uh, Craig and uh, uh, Hutchinson have many years ago, in, two, uh, in 1993 and 1995, I think. But I mean, I think this is more or less a dialect, but this is an, an assumption also, right? This is an assumption that you, you should also put here. It happens that most dynamical laws are temporal cell invariant, but you are meaning really only fundamental laws are taken as relevant for the argument, right? You are not meaning that any law is, is important. You are meaning just the fundamental laws. Take uh, the simplest expression of the law, the simplest models, and then uh, then I can, I can buy this, this, this argument. And this is the, 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 the last point. As this is here, I'm not sure at all about this. So <laughs> it's just a, uh, an, an, an idea, but I don't know. But I mean, Valia already mentioned something like this, so I, I can go quickly. But this is what, something that I, 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 I learned reading this book. But also I'm talking with other physicists about this. That, okay, some symmetries can be a priori, but in the sense that they are playing some role as uh, giving us the rules of the theorems in which the dynamics, the dynamics is, is going is to uh, uh, develop, right? So symmetry can be a priori. I say, okay, this could be weird, could be just a thing about uh, Teufel and Dede of Dürer, probably they are the only ones that think in this way, but again, this paper by Frank Arsenius and Hilary Greaves, they, okay, they don't say it in the same way, but they say something like the following. It's, it's about the reversion of, uh, uh, time, uh, about time reversal in classical electromagnetism. They mention what they call the textbook account. And the textbook account is something like the following. The standard procedure is simply to assume that classical electromagnetism is invariant and time reversal. And then you work out the, the time reversal transformation having this assumption, right? Whatever can keep you the, the, the theory time reversal invariant. Oh, I mean, or at least they mean something in, in this line, right? So it seems to me a special view about symmetry. I mean, at, at least coming from outside physics, it was something like, well, this is strange, right? This is something that you are imposing, you are stipulated upon physical theory. But when I, I go backward in time to Lagrange, this is uh, very old. Is it to be, I mean, this is not about exactly symmetries. I mean, some pages before he mentioned symmetries, but now he's talking about <laughs> conservative principle. But it is more or less the opposite, right? It's something like you have some, some laws, you have some, some dynamical laws, and then you have some principles like the conserva conservation principle, but also some uh, symmetries. But these principles must be viewed as general results of the laws of the dynamics rather than fundamental principle of this science. So there's some idea that it's the other way around. It's not that you first, it's not, the, uh, it's not that you first put the symmetries, but you learn about the symmetries through the, the laws. So it seems to be, as Wigner put it, uh, at some point in the 20th century, a reversal, a, a reversal in the trend, right? A, a, a different way in which we can approach symmetries. But I, again, it seems to be, I, th I, I think that it, it, I, I, at least there, some, there seems to be two approaches. I'm not saying that either of these is, is which, which one is, is the right one? Probably the by stipulation one is the right one or it has been the most successful and probably L L Lagrange is not right or probably you, we can make a distinction that some symmetries are stipulated and some, 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 some of them are discovered. It's not the point here. The point here is that I think that, again, it is what I'm not sure about, is that, well, it depends on which of these approaches we are going to take. The, the inference is going to be uh, a little bit different. I mean, the persuasive force, and this is the, 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 the way in which I like to put it, is the persuasive force of the inference and the relevance for the, of, the, of the premise three might depend on whether time reversal is a discovered symmetry or, or it's just a stipulated symmetry. Again, I, I don't have a knockdown argument. But me, my idea is that most people think in this, in this line, like they think that many space-time symmetries are in also time reversal symmetry in this particular case, 
is something that we stipulate, like that is you said before, and Frank Arsenius and, and, and our Frank Arsenius and Hillary Griffiths are reporting about the literature. What is the standard procedure? But I mean, I have I have doubts that if we took this the way in which we interpret symmetries, then we can make a, a philosophically substantial argument about whether the direction of time is primitive or not. It seems not to be the right kind of premises that we need to make the argument work, because it seems to be something more in the uh, normative size of physical theories. How we should build physical theories? We should build in this particular way, uh, stipulating the inverse invariance. Sometimes we can fail, of course, but sometimes we are going to succeed. But whether we fail or succeed is not about what the world is like, it's about whether we are formulating good physical theories or not. But again, I'm not sure about this, so I'm not going to just keep here. So everything, I think, goes in this, in this way. Uh, something about underdetermination. Whether P3 is true is completely underdetermined. <coughs> if we take it in this, in this just a simple, simple, simple way, we need to add something. We need to add some metaphysical, methodological, and epistemic premises that are necessary, right? Only if you buy something about a particular metaphysic of time, if you assume some methodological principle, and also if you assume some epistemic principles about symmetries, for example, then you can make a case in favor of the, of the premises. But you need to add it, right? You need to say something more. Uh, but the, the justification of these premises is not physics. It's just we need just to debate about the metaphysics of time, me some methodological principle about symmetries, and epistemic principles about symmetries. So this is more or less the, 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 the conclusion. I mean, <coughs> as, 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 as you already See, I mean, I'm not completely convinced about the argument as it is. I mean, you need to add something. The thing is that you are opening uh, the situation to new, to new attacks. I mean, you can reject any of these premises, and the argument is gonna is gonna fall down. And if the argument falls down, well, we can make a case in favor of primitivism. Because I I I read that the, probably I mean I am a bit biased here, but one of the main arguments, one of the main arguments against primitivism is something like the time reversal inference. But if we have reason to uh, reject the inference, then we are opening the way to primitivism. I'm not saying that this is, an, again, an argument in favor of primitivism. It's an argument that can just clear the way to primitivism. Uh, you, you, you can have a different arguments against primitivism, and we can discuss it after. But this argument in particular, I need, I need, uh, it needs something else. And there are many different, I mean, the way in which I read it, I mean, we are going to have a probably a, a no discussion, but Olympia and Mario Casino have a primitive-like approach. I mean, the geometrical approach is more or less, they have different arguments against time reversal. And they are, probably they don't need anything of this, but, but it, it, it could be a way in which, okay, this is not, not important because a geometrical approach can, can work without that. But I would take it that a way to make a case in favor of the, any of these approaches. But also modeling primitivism, he doesn't, as, as far as I know, hasn't said about anything about the time reversal invariant difference. <coughs> and with Michel, we, we were talking about something like rela Leibnizian relational primitivism, and I was working on something like time direction essentialism, just to be provocative. Um, but again, uh, anything of what I said before is an argument in favor of this. But it's an argument in which, okay, we, we are free to develop of these of this views because, well, uh, probably the time reversal inference is not that good, or probably the time reversal invariant doesn't matter that much. And this, this is all. Thanks. Thank you, Christian. We have some five up in <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Christian. It's also nice to see all your work tied together in this way. It's <laughs> lovely. Um, so my question is about a point in the talk when you were discussing representation, and you said one should be careful about distinguishing the ontology and the metaphysics from the language we use to represent, and that time reversal invariance might be a fact about the language, but we shouldn't conflate that with the fact about time itself, or at least the yeah. mm -hmm. of the situation. But of course, there's some difference in the quality of various representations. You know, you could imagine someone saying. Oh, well, quantum entanglement or Bell entanglement, it's, mm. that's a fact about the language, not a fact about yeah, the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you could go down this road and find yourself in absurdity, sadly. Yeah. 
Uh, and you know, sort of reminds one of the conventionality literature in general. It's like um, there are some sorts of conventions that are kind of trivial. <laughs> you know, one could say, you know, I take the word pencil to represent stone, and I can do that freely, but it's a bit trivial. It's not an interesting yeah. sort of determination. And there's other ones that are more interesting. This is sort of a put the yeah. 1974 perspective on convention. Uh, so I guess what I'm principally curious about is what you take to be those represent, what makes a representation for you um, sort of a non-trivial choice? So it's not trivial to say that I choose this meaning for time reversal or that meaning for time reversal. Mm -hmm. And what makes it, you know, basically amounting to one and the same, one and the same thing, sort of, you know. Okay, so yeah. What makes a good representation? Why is this different from a tag? <coughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, okay, yeah, that, 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 that's very good. Um, let me first say what the kind of analogies I'm thinking here to I say, okay, probably term reversal is like this case, and then I'm going to reply to your question. But I'm going to say, okay, we, 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 can, we have a trivial case in which we can formulate theories in first order logic, right? This is probably a, th a problem of representation. This, okay, you can formulate in first order logic or you can formulate in second order logic. Or you can formulate the theories in a deterministic way, in which some propositions in the theory implies other propositions, blah, blah. I'm thinking in terms of invariance in that way, right? In that way. In that way because I'm thinking that they are just trying to make this first order generalizations, I mean, the laws of the theory, simpler and more. I mean, again, I'm just now buying the, 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 the human parlance, if you want. But I mean, they are trying to make this contribution as formulating the theory in a specific language or formulating the theory in a, a deterministic way or not, are doing more or less the same. And this is, I mean, just adding some simplification here. This is a way in which I think that some humans could think about this. I mean, could think about in, the, in, in this particular way. Now, this is a very good question, okay, which is, okay, but you, you can do something more radical. Say, okay, everything is representation, right? Mass, we have mass, it's a predicate, but this representation is not here or here, it's representation. Energy also is representation, just put it there. Yeah, this is a very complicated thing. I mean, uh, um, I think that this is a, a problem for, for, for humans how to distinguish between what they are going to put here. I mean, you are always in the risk of just decoupling completely the representation from the, from the ontology. And this could be a problem if you are a more naturalist philosopher in the sense that, okay, you can put whatever you want here because you, everything which appear in the physical theory are gonna be representation. So this are, uh, uh, probably could be a very radical move. Which is gonna be a good representation? Which is gonna be a good thing? Well, I would, I would say that all these things that, I mean, in, again, in the human parlance, all these resources that can uh, capture uh, this uh, all, 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 the, all, the, all the, the, the things that I need to capture these regularities in, in some very simple way. Um, let, me, let, me, let me think of an example. Um, for example, I mean, it seems to be, uh, okay, well, it could be also a representation, but I mean, it could be a good representation to formulate the dynamics of the theory in a differential way. Okay, it could be, I mean, it could be different, yeah, it could be different, but it could be a good representation because uh, it's, the, it's the best way in which we can capture these regularities. So in that case, you could say that this is something stronger than just formulating the theories in a first order logic or just formulating the theory in a time reversal invariant way. It should be something that is stronger. But I'm not sure. But I mean, I, I'm, I was thinking more in the negative sense, in the negative sense that time reversal symmetry seems to be something like formulating the theories in a deterministic way or formulating the theory in a first order logic or any other way. Because, again, because this, 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 uh, this way in which you can read the, uh, uh, the, the role that symmetries are playing. Uh, but you're, you're right that, that, I mean, at some point you, you can always make the same chip movement and say, okay, no, everything is, is representation and the ontology is whatever I want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, a, it's a good question for humans, <laughs> I guess. But I, again, I, I would say that something like this, this, 
very specific way in which you can represent the regularities, for, for example, a differential way. Yes, it's theory, it's representation, but it could be something else. But again, it depends on the human, probably some humans are going to be more realistic and they're going to say something more substantial. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I wanted to explore a bit more the stipulation versus yeah. discovery framework you had there. I, I read what um, people like Azenius and, and Greaves are doing, and, and indeed what physicists are doing, field theory are doing, it's slightly differently. I, I read them as saying something like, we don't know a priori how the objects in this theory transform under proposed symmetry transformations, <coughs> um, or indeed, in a more geometric language, we don't know a priori mm -hmm. what geometric objects are supposed to correspond to these coordinate characterized objects. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a way of stipulating those transformation properties such that we get this symmetry? If there is, then those are the right transformation properties and we have symmetry. Mm -hmm. This is the point of my value that one disagree, really, but that's a certain matter. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also going to be the case that it's extremely plausible <laughs> that there will be no such way of doing it. Yeah, and be. then there will be no time symmetry. So if you try doing that for electromagnetism, you'll find that taking E to E and B to minus B works. And so you'll say, fine, that's time reversal. Try doing that for the standard model, and you'll find there is no such transformation. Or try doing it for GW or the Longchamp equation, there, you'll find there is no such transformation. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think it's quite right to call those stipulations. It's more kind of you know, explorations of the possibility of defining a transformation that looks like time versus symmetry mm -hmm. with a live possibility that it cannot be done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is what I, I say that I'm not really sure about, about, about this because, I mean, something in the same line I was thinking. Um, probably I, I, I was drawing too much from, okay, this, from what Dertelef said and Frank Arsenio said, but I, I, I would put it down in this way. You build, I mean, you are going to build your physical theory and you want to impose some symmetries and then you see how, how, how far you can go with this stipulation, right? I mean, you have trivial cases in which the theory is non-time reversal invariant like GRW. So, so it, I mean, it makes no sense to say that any, any violation, any, any stipulation can, can, can go. But, but it seems in this, in this particular case, you have some, some room for maneuver in the sense that you have quantum mechanics and then you have the standard transformation in classical mechanics and when you go to quantum mechanics you see that something doesn't work. The theory has all this issue with the Schrodinger equation and with the negative energies and so on, of the Hamiltonian unbounded, whatever. And then you, you always can change the transformation and say, okay, I, I'm gonna mean something like the following and then you change somehow the transformation to, to keep the theory invariant. But this, again, I, I think that is playing more a, heuristic role. I mean, I assume this and I, I, I go as far as I, as I can, but it could fail. At some point it could fail and then we're going to discover something important. But this assumption is somehow there. And I think it's somehow yeah. there. And it has to be interesting to think about the... Oh, sorry, you want me to... Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all later. Yeah. Short time, if, if uh, let's go quickly. Uh, Elise and then Francesca. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe this is super crude, but is this what you're trying to say? So. It was Dasgupta's original argument that P3 you sort of took out, right? Um, this is a... Uh, or your reconstruction of something Dasgupta. This, right? is, I mean, this, this is, is a metaphysician talking about physics, right? Let, let, and let so stripping the relevant concepts of any kind of context. <laughs> and what you did is said, this isn't really the way we do philosophy of physics. When we look at the context for how people talk about, for instance, time reversal and so on, we find that there's a richer metaphysic that maybe it plays different roles in their explanatory ordering, which was David's points, like sometimes you begin from symmetry, some, whatever, whatever, right? Um, and those things are important for how you construct mm -hmm. your view, and so this is just maybe not good <coughs> physics. Right? But uh, again, okay, this is a part that is physics, how do you define the transformation, uh, how do you be a physical theorist, I'm not gonna say anything about that, but you want to talk about what is primitive, and then it's like, okay, this is, this is something about metaphysics, it's not about physics. Right. I mean, I, 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 I'm fine if, if you stop here. I mean, I, I don't have anything but to say. I mean, you about primitivity commits you to a, a, a sort of a hierarchical. Method. No, 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 sorry. No, no, no. I mean, I, I, I can go with something like a Lewis model of reduction and say, okay, the primitive are just the terms in which I define the the, the, the derivative thing, right? Well, I mean, uh, it's, I, I don't have levels. I just have the primitives, and then I, I can just place the things in the in the primitive terms. 
But again, I mean, I mean the, the, the point I want to make is, of course, I mean, there are a lot of physical stuff that I don't, I don't have anything to say as how you are going to build physical theory, how you are going to build your transformation, what do you think about time reversal. I mean, this is not the point. The point is that this argument, at least in philosophy of physics, metaphysics of science, he used to talk about uh, what the world is like, about whether there is a duration of time or not, whether it's fundamental or not. And this is the, the point I want to make. It's, okay, and I think that that's good that makes a, a, a good argument why you can connect these two things. And the, the language, or I mean, the way in which the arguments go in philosophy of physics sometimes is an instance of that argument. It's an instance of, okay, I have the, 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 the dynamical laws, time reversal invariant, and then I, I talk about the direction of time. I say, okay, I need a justification for this because you only have mathematics on, the, on this side. You have mathematics until here, and then you have metaphysics on the other side. And I say, okay, I, I want a connection. And I, I was trying to make sense of that connection. And the only way in which I, I, I found that I can make of this connection is, okay, I need to add more premises. Premises about laws, premises about, about um, symmetries, about time. And then I say, okay, yeah, now it makes sense. Of course, I mean, physicists shouldn't care about this. I mean, this is, it's not, I mean, it's not my business to say how they should do the work. But my, my business is how you, uh, how, this is my, my, my business, right? My business is whether the duration of time is primitive or not. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, this is my, my reply. No, it's no, fine? Okay. Or, uh, just a no question. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> complimentary because it's <laughs> the naive physicist point of view on metaphysics. Uh, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, so, I, thank you so much for uh, uh, giving such a nice, account of these different positions uh, on the metaphysics of time. Uh, let me give you uh, my naive reaction as yeah. a physicist, because Good. if I have to make sense of what is the metaphysics of time, well, okay, what do I know? I know that time is a component of the gravitational field, and about the gravitational field, I have uh, quite uh, a strong opinion about what is the corresponding ontology in the sense that mm -hmm. the gravitational field is a substance, uh, but it's in fact a very strange substance in the sense that I it is completely defined I in terms of uh, a, a relationality. So it's relationality that comes from the fact that uh, localization within the gravitational field comes uh, by um, conjunction. Uh, like yeah. mm -hmm. and, but also, if you even move into quantum gravity, there is a relationality that is inherited there by if you take a relational uh, interpretation of quantum mechanics. So it's a, a relational uh, substance, if you want. So this dissolves somehow uh, the dichotomy between taking about time as a part of the gravitational field, um, uh, whether you want to think in terms of relationality or want to think in terms of substance. And it seems to me that in the moment in which you dissolve the, such a dichotomy, you also dissolve another dichotomy that is the one about symmetry, whether you want to think in uh, symmetry in a realistic way or in a deflationistic way. Mm -hmm. Because uh, uh, in this context, uh, then, uh, uh, Symmetries are just uh, modes of interactions between systems. So what a symmetry does is to code what are the possible yeah, mm -hmm. interactions between mm -hmm. systems, mm -hmm. including, so I, I never thought about this, but in fact, uh, you can think of uh, time reversal as uh, one of these uh, possible modes of interaction. Uh, but in a moment in which you do this, uh, there is a total uh, convergence between being a realist and being also, because this is a matter of, uh, of the real world, it's not something like a platonic external to the world. But at the same time, uh, it, there is indeed an epistemic uh, aspect in this, uh, and they are completely, they, they cannot mm -hmm. be taken um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. away from one another. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to be a yes, no question. It's yeah, okay. well, yeah, 30 seconds. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to, okay, yeah. Just very brief. yeah, I mean, I think that we, we are having just a semantic discussion. I mean, what, when, when you talk about, I mean, what I mean by relationalism, by substantivalism, I mean something uh, very specific. When you talk about relational substantivalism, we should discuss what, the, what do you mean, because probably we are we're just using the names differently. Uh, because of what they are calling, I mean, I, I think the way in which you are going, what you are calling relational substantivalism for me is just substantivalism, period. Because all, in, in substantivalism, you always have also temporal relations and different ways in which you can coordinate. But again, I think this is a semantic discussion and this is not a very important discussion. And about uh, the symmetry, the deflation, I mean, of course you have always the two aspects. But again, the, the discussion is about 
you have some symmetries and you want to say something about whether they are part of this. Uh, again, I take Stephen French case. Uh, this is the clear. But Stephen French, I mean, the, the, the fundamental structure of the world is the laws of physics plus symmetries. And I, I, I mean that this view, of course, you have some epistemic uh, epistemic things that you, you, you can say about symmetries. This is not, not the case. But the case is that you are saying that symmetries are part of the fundamental laws, even though you have other epistemic aspects of symmetries. But you are saying you are committed to something like, like, like that. That's what I call in uh, real, uh, fundamentalism or symmetry realism, if you want, if you want to be weaker. When I, I'm calling more, a more epistemic view is that you are not committed to the claim that this is it. <laughs> okay. You're not going to claim that this part of the fundamental ontology or part of the fundamental things. You are thinking, of, even though you can have some ontological claims about symmetries, you can say that they are grounded in the regularities. You can say something like this story. I mean, again, I'm not saying that they are opposite view. It's just a matter of emphasis, right? But in one point, you are em emphasizing that they are part of the fundamental things, and the other side, you say no, they are not part of the fundamental things. Yeah, sorry, I was very brief and it was very confusing. We can talk about that, but <laughs> Pablo was, 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 was. Thanks again yeah. for speaking. Thanks.